Gentlemen, World War II was a conflict that took the lives of tens of millions of people and spanned the globe. We saw rapid innovation in military technology, the implementation of new tactics, and at the micro level, the implementation of new guns, such as the MP40, of which we are going over today. Now you may be wondering, Admin, you can't think it's a good idea to dress up as a German soldier from World War II. Hear me out on this one. Well, you're right. It is a little bit dangerous in this political landscape. People will throw mean slanderous things at you. You'll attract crowds from both sides of the alley that are weird. And mainly, I don't care because the LARP requires a cool look. Look at this guy LARPing. And we're gonna do that today. What I'm actually more scared of is the World War II reenactors coming after me knowing that my kit is not 100% correct. So keep that in mind. I am a very, very, very to the fifth power amateur historian. I do appreciate this stuff, but I do get things wrong from time to time, and I'm only human. But I am a great appreciator of history. Today we're taking a look at the MP40, and we're going to go over it because, well, this is a gun channel. Laos! Gentlemen, I of course want to give a big thank you to this video sponsor, Enlisted. Enlisted is a first-person shooter that offers both PvP as well as PvE. You can take command of massive amounts of AI troops that are customizable and compete against other players that are doing the same in the World War II landscape. Enlisted covers a wide gauntlet of historical eras during World War II, anywhere from the outskirts of Moscow in 1941 to capturing Berlin in 1945. You can play for free on both Xbox, PC, or PlayStation. Enlisted campaigns are so varied that in each one it feels like you're playing a whole new game. Enlisted is pretty friendly to a wide variety of audiences, and it's hardcore where it matters, with the TTK being relatively fast on both soldiers and equipment. If you're a fan of World War II like me, you're going to enjoy the wide gauntlet of weapons, equipment, and aircraft in Enlisted that allow you to take command of those and employ them on the World War II battlefield, without the horrors of war, of course. Now, of course, I'm a big World War II enjoyer. I'm not a history buff, but I do love the wide selection of weapons that you can choose from and play with in any sort of different campaign. It's what makes a game like this rather fun, as well as that fast TTK. That's important because it makes those shooters feel that much more kinetic. There's also a free bonus pack if you use my link that is also in the description in the pinned comment. So go check it out. Big thank you to Enlisted. If you shoot an MP40 in the woods, does it make a noise? So quick backstory on the MP40. So post-World War I, we're going back to the start. The world sees the need for submachine guns. The Germans are already on this with their MP18, but of course they improve it as time goes on. There was a number of intermediate submachine guns they made along the way to get to what would be the MP38, what would be the MP40. Now the MP38 came first. Sadly, we don't have an MP38 out here today, but those are even more rare than what you would find on the MP40 market here in the United States. The MP40 being a much more well machined submachine gun than the MP40 to the extent that it was over machined and when you have a war on a massive scale a world war the economy that you need to have has to be so refined when it comes to your weapons that that gun would get streamlined and that was gonna be the case for all the major powers during World War II as the war goes on a lot of your weapons become simpler and simpler especially the ones that are very thick with the cost think of the Thompson that would end up becoming the grease not the same gun but they would go to the grease gun for a much cheaper cost Sten guns from the Lancaster to Sten 
cannons, yada, 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 etc. Now, the Germans even down the road in World War II would get a bunch of last ditch weapons, such as the MP3008, or would you say 308, 3008? I guess you could say MP3008. That sounds, that sounds more gun guy vernacular. The Germans would have the MP3008, and that would be like their last ditch. It was essentially a copy of the stand. But for the majority of World War II, their submachine gun of choice was the MP40. Hey, 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 hey. All right, buddy. I just built an outpost, okay? We're gonna be pushing this objective. Now, commander wants me to build a garrison, so I need you to take the squad. We're gonna go on a flanking mission. Don't mess this up. It's all riding on you, and if you lose, the entire chat's gonna make fun of you. Okay, good luck. The MP40 has a bunch of cool details that we, of course, have to go over. So features of the gun that we'll go over and breeze through quickly. I'm sure, first off, let me address this. I'm sure you saw this, the sight doing a little flip motion. It is a little loose back here, so that recoil would bump it, but it can lock up. And uh, it's still a little loosey-goosey. Now, the stock also, it's a pretty good MP40 stock, but this one is moving just a little bit. I'm getting attacked by flies. Ha! Enemy aircraft's buzzing the Germans. World War II reference, gotcha. Woo so this stock's a little loosey-goosey, but once you cinch down on the gun, the recoil is so nominal with that ammo. We were using 124 grain ammo, which is gonna be from AAC, the ammo sponsor of the channel. Wow, what a segue. This guy can really segue. And he does a Trump impersonation when he talks about AAC. I don't get it. I don't get it, but I appreciate it. And so we address the two things that wobble. Now we'll address the rest of the gun, kind of going from, uh, do we dare? Do we dare grand thumb it? Go tip the butt? So we have a threaded barrel up here and it ratches off and it's pretty interesting. It has the neural protector and I'll throw some photos up, but there were rare instances where silencers were used during World War II. I can't tell you the operations or the names of that history context. My brain can only hold so much knowledge. And brother, it's not that much. It really has a threaded barrel, which I think is cool. So it would have been interesting to see more suppressor usage during World War II, but that just didn't happen. I think that's a fun concept. I think it makes for fun spin-off stuff. Video games, of course, love to run wild with that concept, like games like Call of Duty, where you can trick out World War II guns and make them quasi-modern weapons. Moving down, we have this front sight aperture. Then we get down to the more interesting part where it's the backlight barrel protector. Now, essentially, this was used to rest your gun in the firing ports of vehicles because a lot of the thought process was, hey, compact weapon, submachine gun, you're gonna have mechanized troops, so getting the most bang for your buck for those guys, if getting their firepower into the fight, and you have that, so the barrel would stay hooked on to that ledge in that firing port. Granted, I've never been in a vehicle like that to try this out, so I'm just regurgitating knowledge that's already out there. And so you wouldn't have the recoil coming back into the vehicle. I mean, keep in mind also, you gotta be pretty bad at recoil management to not control an MP40. So, kind of embarrassing if that happens to you. All right, now we'll move down to the magazines. So, of course, we have a stick magazine. This is gonna be a YouTube compliant. 29 round magazine, but normally there are 32 rounds. But for YouTube's sake, I like to follow the rules. On this side, just a single side mag ejector. And then we have our magazine well. And then we move back to, we're doing a simplified run. We have the backlight lower, what we would call it. And then we have the stamped metal upper receiver. And then we have our bolt. So simply this gun is a very well put together tube gun. Tube. Tube. So this gun is an open bolt submachine gun platform that was very common essentially since these guns came out. And the Germans, of course, did their thing and made this probably one of the better ones. It's arguable that people often say the MP40 may be the best submachine gun of World War II. Some people might lump the STG-44 into this category, but I don't, I, I'm considering pistol caliber carbines. And then others would say it's the Italian SMG. Now, I think this is a really well-made submachine gun. I think it's awesome and the jury's still out. I, I would prefer this in certain settings and others I may take a PPSH 41. I might want that PPSH 41. Shocker, I know. But this thing is a really well-made tube gun. Let's quickly go down the manual of arms really quick in case one day you come across an MP40 and you need to know how to safely operate it. The gun, of course, is very simple. Chances are you already probably know how to work an MP40 if you've ever played a video game in your life. So what's cool about the MP40 is it has a additional safety mechanism. Now, what that is, is that didn't have this originally on the MP38s and this was liable to cause a malfunction if caught on something before the bolt caught the sear and you could send a round off which we're going to try here in a second so what they did is they added this feature into the guns on the mp40s and i believe on the mp38s down the road where you could lock the bolt into place now you also have the option going safety to the rear you can lock it in there and then of course when ready to fire you go to the open bolt position, release the trigger, and hold down that trigger. Bolt's going to cycle and cycle and cycle, and there's no lock back, right? And that's pretty simple, right? There's nothing you haven't seen before in pop culture. Of course, magazine release, push the button, 
pull it in, done it, lock to the rear. You're doing the shooting, now you ain't. Lock her in, gun's good to go. Real quick, let's actually try sending a round off down range from that perspective. So you could definitely crack off a round uh, if you short stroke the bolt. If you mess up, you know, the manual of arms and the safety is gonna be a little bit different with an open bolt weapon system. You really gotta like pay attention. Now, let's quickly take this bad boy apart. Bad boy counter. The weapon is clear. We just conducted a live fire safety drill. Now we're gonna take this gun apart. You have this little twisty tab at the bottom. You twist that, you pull it. It's like a plunger type material. You'll pull it, twist it, bop it. Jerk it, no. And then what you're gonna do is rotate the gun. We're gonna pull the trigger, then you can rotate the gun and you can pull her out. All right, now she's still connected, of course, to the lower. And then we have essentially a very simple upper receiver. And it's kind of like you turn it sideways and it's like, wait a second, it almost gets kind of steady, but it's not, it's way better than the sten. So we can pull this bolt out. And the Germans, of course, doing German things, they have this bolt and spring set up that is very, very well made, I would say. So the Germans came up with a design where you have a, it's not a fixed firing pin in there and it's uh, hooked up to the bolt. And it's really cool actually, because I think it helps with keeping the gun uh, running clean. If you have a spring exposed, that spring is gonna tend to maybe, especially with these type of guns, crawling around in the dirt, in the grime, wherever you may be. War is messy, trenches are messy. So if you find yourself in these circumstances, you don't get a clean flat range, you know? So helping to keep the gun as clean as possible is a great plus. So it's essentially like a telescoping spring, which I think is pretty neat, actually. So we'll throw it back together. Then you do a full takedown, I'm not that guy. Oh, and we'll show you the quick bottom of the gun. So you can see, you can see that uh, bottom of the gun with the sear right here. Pull her down, it drops the bolt, and she's ready to go. Lift, let the go of the trigger, sear comes up, stops the bolt. Very, very simple firing mechanism. It's, uh, it's a real pain when you exist in the gun world and you know about the NFA. Because these guns retail for a lot of money because they're fully transferable machine guns. And while that hurts is because honestly, to make these guns back in the day, it was supposed to be as cheap as possible. Probably in today's money, it'd probably be like, um, I don't know, a few hundred, maybe five to a thousand dollars, I could guess. But they'll retail anywhere in the teens to, you know, maybe 50 plus thousand dollars today. So it kind of hurts. Now, of course, this gun is really cool. It's really uh, historic and iconic, but sadly, the gun isn't mine. It belongs to a dear, dear friend of the channel who we haven't had on in a bit, who I've missed very much because it's been so hot out. But he is back now. Mr. Nick, welcome to the channel. I missed you, brother. I missed you, brother. Thanks for Great to be back. here. Great to be here. Thanks for letting me use your MP40 for a Absolutely. video. Absolutely. Now, I was telling him I always do when I borrow cool guns like this. Uh, you know, I, I'm not the expert on, I'm not the owner, but you are. So you got to take it away and tell us a little bit about how you got it, a little bit back to the backstory, which I think is fascinating and just what makes it so special. It is a vet bring back uh, from a member of the 820th, sorry. No, you're good. Well, this is a, uh, an all original, mm -hmm. all matching vet bring back. Mm -hmm. And it was brought back by a member of the 823rd Tank Destroyer Battalion. His name was Staff Sergeant Frank Krybosucki, and he basically brought it home from the Arden Forest where he fought in December of 44 mm -hmm. and January of 45. This was bought from his widow. Literally every serial number on this gun matches. I don't shoot it with the matching bolt or firing pin, but I do have them. Basically a testament to when war trophies were based. Could you imagine getting an MP40 as a war trophy? Woo. I am the third owner from the German who carried it. Original sling, original parts, everything is original. You even have the original mag loader. I have the original FXO 41 mag loader. So it's nice having this loader. It really does help out a lot because this is a double stack mag that comes to a single feed. These type of magazines are known for having a lot of spring tension. This uh, gun is FXO 41, which was Hanel, uh, made in 1941. And the nice thing about the earlier guns there was no slave labor involved. It was German craftsmanship. Every single part on this gun is stamped with the correct number. Uh, not like the quality suffered later in the war. Mm. Yep, that's a big deal. Good. This feels like it's kind of like cattywampus. No, it is, but it always was. Oh, okay. All right. It got a, a ricochet or something hit it here and it doesn't sit right. 
So something to note about this gun that I kind of overlooked real quick was the backlight grip on this steel frame is a little cattywampus. It's not sitting right on the gun, but there's a little bit of damage on this. Frank brought this back and actually described it in his diary that they engaged a German half-track in the woods. And in the aftermath, uh, he told his wife that whoever was carrying this didn't need it anymore. So it's a little bit haunted. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, this thing is a very cool piece of history. It's really awesome. I appreciate you for letting me uh, borrow it and run and gun this thing, especially because these aren't cheap. So uh, I, I, I've, I feel honored that you have a lot of faith in me to not break it. Always, brother. And thank you for having me out again. Oh, of course. All right. All right, Waffle Boys, round it up. We have one last mission to go over. Uh, the Fuhrer. See, hey, whoa, 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 he's not around here. Take it easy. Well, the Fuhrer's right behind you. Ah, <laughs> uh, you got me. You got me, you son of a gun. All right, no, stop joking around. Listen up, here's the plan. This is what we're gonna do. We have a mission, we're gonna go attack the Allied lines. Uh, do we have any armor support? Tank support? Uh, no, we don't have any tank support. They're all, they're all been knocked out. Do we have any Luftwaffe support? Air support. <laughs> Are you the new guy? Where did you, you get the memo? We don't have any planes. Buddy, we just have our MP40s and car 98s. We didn't even get issued the SCG-44 yet. Yeah, no, we're all gonna die for sure. Yeah, 9,000%. Well, do we at least look very cool? We do look pretty cool. Yeah, I will say we do look pretty cool. All right, now I wanna demonstrate the recoil of the MP40, but to do that effectively, let's compare it to some of the guns that I would have gone toe to toe with. So at first we have an M1 Thompson and God's caliber 45 ACP. I'm gonna go for the bottom of the target as tight as I can get it. This is pretty up close. All right, really good cyclic rate. That thing was cooking way faster than the MP40. So next up we have the Stenmark 5, so we'll go for the higher part of the silhouette. Yeah, that's embarrassing. Very little recoil, very nominal. Oh, slight malfunction. One more round. And of course, that last round was a little inaccurate. And of course, next up we have the PPSH-41. This thing often referred to as the burp gun because it has such a fast cyclic rate. It fooled me, we can't get fooled again. We'll go top left. Okay, that was the most violent of them all. Definitely the worst grouping. It's strange that the, the grouping is very horizontal. And lastly, the star of the show, Mr. MP40. We'll go for the head box. All right, now let's check out the results. The administrative results. Gotcha. Okay, my friends. So here's our results. Pretty, very close shooting to try and get as tight of a group as possible. So we have MP40. We have the Sten, the Thompson, and then the PPSH-41. You can see, I'm not trying to game it. I do like the MP-40. I think the Sten and the MP-40 were the tightest to shoot, but that MP-40, that recoil, just feels so freaking controllable. Even, even that much better than the Sten. With the Thompson, you can see this vertical pattern that it has. And then in, in comparison to the PPSH-41, which is the much more horizontal pattern, which I find interesting. Now, of course, this was pretty much from just about point blank as far as gun fighting goes. Now, what I wanna try and do is push these guns to the distance that would have been on the far end of what I think some of the guys using them would have considered. I think around 200 yards is often considered like the, the far end for these guns. So let's give that a shot. All right, now we're gonna see the accuracy at a little bit more distance offhand. We're gonna do some controlled bursts that about 200 yards. If this was hell let loose, you would be like trying to move your cursor or your controller and you're like, ah, come on, come on. And you're probably not gonna get them. But this is on the farther end of, you know, submachine gun effectiveness. Oop. Have a little bit of a hiccup. Okay, so I'm the problem. I always am. I was trying to baby the trigger and I should have been more aggressive with it. And I don't think it's gonna bode well for the Thompson as far as accuracy goes. I could see those rounds dropping pretty quick. All right, next up we have Sten, tube gun in it. Yeah, 
Okay, round's complete. I know the PPSH 41. Let's see how she does. Rounds complete. It's funny with the um, with the front sight post from this distance. It's pretty much the entire size of the silhouette. Those silhouettes aren't that small. All right, now we're gonna shoot the far right target with the MP40, which is kind of ironic. All right, now let's go check out the results. The managerial was just kidding. Wrong channel. All right, gang, not looking so hot. So working left to right, we have the Thompson, the Sten, the PPSH-41, and then the MP-40. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that I could be the issue and I could be the bad shooter and I don't have that much time if I really train every day to dial in my, somebody, or dial in my burst from distance and probably I could be better, but this was a quick off the fly, offhand shooting. So at first we have the Thompson. We have one, two, three hits. The Sten, surprisingly, seems out of the bunch to have been one of the better ones. One, two, three, four, five, six hits. PPSH 41 looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hits. Oh, eight, eight hits. That's pretty good. And then where is my MP40? Where's my MP40 target? Well, that's not good. So if this is the MP40 target, that one's completely naked. So I may have not, sh I put out five targets by accident. I only needed four. That's embarrassing. This one only has one hit. If this, I think this is the MP40, oh, two hits. Oh, pretty bad. The MP40 definitely lost in the long distance shooting if I was shooting at the right target. <laughs> So overall, how is the MP40? Well, I think for the time in the era, it's a really good weapon. There is no doubt that the Germans are master craftsmen when it comes to engineering. In the war, they pioneered and innovated a lot of technology that we would adopt and use to this day. Heck, we even stole their scientists for our space program so we can send guys to the moon, allegedly for my conspiracy theorists. The gun had its drawbacks, right? I mean, it is a submachine gun after all. There is this weird thing where you have these high-powered rifles with eight millimeter Mauser and you have nine millimeter Luger. And there is no bridging the gap until the SCG-44 comes along. But of course it comes in very late in the war and it wouldn't have mattered anyway, because people are like, and I've done it too, where it's like, could this have changed the tide of the war? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was implemented at the start, but I mean, 1945 rolls around and Berlin's gonna look like Nagasaki. Doesn't really matter, matter too much when the atomic bomb gets introduced, but at the micro level, yeah, it could really uh, affect people, you know, in that instance. But it is really cool to get this gun on. I do love the history, the matching serial numbers, the story behind it, it all culminates for a really awesome freaking video that I get the privilege of doing. So I'm very excited. Guys, thanks for stopping by. Let me rant to you about history and doing the no-no LARP every once in a while. I think it's really fun and it brings out an interesting crowd. <laughs> but nonetheless, no, big thanks to Nick for letting me borrow the MP40. Gentlemen, another big thank you to Enlisted for sponsoring this video. I do love my World War II weapons, and you can get a chance to see and run and gun them if you never have in the game Enlisted. So big thank you to those guys for yet again sponsoring this video. Yet again, link in the pinned comment as well as description, and you get that bonus pack when you do sign up. Thank you, Enlisted. Very cool. If you want to support this channel in any way, shape, or form because YouTube definitely doesn't like what we do here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Patreon and merch are also excellent ways to support the channel because we can always crank out this content through that financial support. So, big thank you, guys. As always, I'll blitzkrieg you later. Okay, my friends. Taking the lives of hundreds of millions of people. Does that, that sound right? No, too many. Too many. That's embarrassing.